this is the conus equatorial mount uh, this is the declination section so the telescope actually sits here so the telescope sits here in this groove in this direction like this um, and this is the declination section so it's turned by this gear and over here is the right ascension which again is turned by this gear and these are the motor mounts so one on this side for the declination and another for the right ascension and uh, initially I had planned to use servo motors here so that I could uh, the idea was to convert this entire device into a go-to mount so in order to in, so something that I could tell via my computer or a Bluetooth device to go to a certain position in the sky some particular declination value and some particular right ascension value so that it would point at a given star that I wanted it to point at so to achieve that I needed precise position control of these gears now I don't have the original motors here but they were just plain DC motors with a with a little gearbox on with their own little gearbox so I could turn both these axes through the computer just by applying voltages to those uh, to the motors but I couldn't achieve position control because there was no feedback coming from here to the computer telling me how much exactly the motor had turned it was just plain DC motors in both these both these uh, mounts so my initial idea was to replace these with stepper motors so that I could get position control because on a stepper motor I know exactly how many steps a motor has turned and so then I can keep track of exactly how far this has turned and how many degrees this has turned but unfortunately if you look at the mount here the hole which so the so the motor is actually supposed to sit on this side and the, sh the motor sits on this side uh, the the housing of the motor would come here and the shaft would stick out through this hole and then be able to turn this gear so the shaft comes out motor shaft would come out from this hole and then be able to turn this gear the trouble is as you can see that hole is actually offset from the center similarly with this one it's not in the center it's offset uh, so I can't use a classical stepper motor for this because stepper motors have the shaft right in the center so I'd have to drill another shaft here another hole here for the stepper motor shaft and then somehow come up with another gearing mechanism to link that shaft to this gear which is uh, which has been a bit too much for me so I decided to go in for a DC motor so this one I bought on a website in India called robu.in and uh, their, their brand name is actually orange it's their own brand name I believe these motors are made in India and uh, so there's just a DC motor here 12 volt DC motor I bought the 10 rpm version which is the highest torque they have because I, I would like a lot of torque to move a heavy telescope you need a lot of torque so I bought the lowest rpm and the highest torque 10 rpm and it generates about uh, 680 newton, newton centimeters of torque so there's a reduction gearing in here and then the shaft the output shaft which turns at 10 rpm if you, produ if you provide 12 volts and luckily for me these fit perfectly into the uh, the original hole so you can see that here and the shaft I can turn this this is a little heavy but you can see the shaft comes out beautifully sorry yeah so the motor fits perfectly into the offset hole and the shaft is positioned perfectly for me to connect it to that gearing over there so these motors oops So these motors would fit perfectly for me and uh, I should be able to fix them into the structure quite easily uh, but again these are just plain DC motors so there's no way I can sense position of the shaft with just the DC motor alone and so for that I also bought a pair of these encoders so these are Hall effect sensors and I have fitted one of the encoders onto the second motor I'll be using so this one so you can see the the motor basically has 
a shaft at the rear. This is the rear end of the motor. This, that's the front end, where the, which will connect to the gearing. This is the gearing end. And this is the rear end, with this uh, small shaft coming out of the motor base. So, that shaft turns with the motor. So, if you position a hall sensor, so there's a little magnet, there's some magnets attached to this little circular device. And there are hall sensors, you can see, just see the two of them there, one there and one there. And they send, as this thing turns with the shaft of the motor, they send these electronic pulses out through the outputs. So if you count those pulses, you can tell how far the motor has been turning and in which direction it's been turning. So um, I'm thinking that this setup should be enough for me to not only measure, not only control the telescope, okay, but if I take an output from here, from the from the Hall effect sensor, from the encoder. And if I take the output to an Arduino, I should be able to count the number of pulses as the motor is turning. So I should be able to know exactly how many degrees the, that motor has turned. And so therefore I can achieve perfect position control of the telescope mount. So that's the project in hand to achieve uh, position control of this Conus equatorial mount. So here's a test setup with the DC motor. These are the orange 12 volt 10 RPM motors. So as you can see there are six leads that come out and uh, so the first two are for the motors power supply. The third one is for the 5 volt DC to the Hall effect sensor that's inside this encoder and then there's a ground pin for the Hall effect uh, encoder and then there are two output lines which uh, pulse alternately depending on which way the motor is turning so you would use this encoder I guess on a, sh on a shaft which was turning manually also and uh, depending on which of these these two wires would send out two pulses Depending which one came first, which pulse, which one, which wire pulsed first would tell you which direction the motor is moving. But that's not important for us. Now, for me, that's not really important because I already know which way I'm going to turn this motor depending on the voltage that I supply to it. So I know if it's going forwards or backwards. So I don't need both these wires. I'll be just using one of them. So the two uh, motor power supply uh, coming from these two leads and that's coming from my power source which is right now at 2.2 volts uh, I haven't yet started the output um, I'm using an Arduino Uno just to provide the 5 volt DC needed for the encoder so I've ensured there's a common ground and things like that and to the oscilloscope which is here I've taken the output of one of the encoder lines so this is the encoder line this is one of them the other one I'm not using so it's just lying here this is one of the encoder lines, so that's coming to the oscilloscope. So let's start the motor and have a look. So I'm starting the output from these two leads now, 2.2 uh, volts. All right. So you can see the motor turning slowly. There you go. the motor shaft that's right there so that's turning okay and obviously um, there's pulses coming out right here now from this the encoder um, you know it's sensing the shaft is turning and it's sending me pulses so let's have a look at the oscilloscope so you can see the pulses there um, what you can probably see is right now they're at a frequency of about 250 hertz so that means 250 pulses per second are coming from the encoder alright and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce the voltage so 
I'm actually now at uh, 4.2 volts and let's reduce the voltage to the motor and let's see what happens to the pulses so there's an audible change in the in the sound of the motor itself okay so now the pulses are coming at about uh, what can you say at about uh, 83 87 hertz or something so about about 85 pulses per minute 85 90 pulses per minute at this voltage you can reduce it even further you can see the pulses spacing out all right so now th at this voltage so this so now the outputs at 1.2 volts that's just not enough to turn the motor at all so that's why there's no pulses so let me increase that a little yeah so you can see there clearly the pulses are coming in so what we're going to do with the arduino is actually count these pulses you can see that the oscilloscope is already counting them here so 90 pulses per second but I want the Arduino, uh, the Arduino to count the pulses. Once we have the Arduino counting pulses, then we can tell exactly how far the shaft has turned. And if we know how far this shaft has turned, we can then estimate how far that shaft has turned. And if we know how far that shaft has turned, we can then correlate that with the angular movement of the the uh, the, the parts of the telescope, so the, the declination and the right ascension. So that's the plan. Let's see how it goes. So let's just increase the voltage a little and take a look at the, so there you go, it's now at, uh, it's about 6.2 volts and uh, about 420 hertz is what we're seeing, there you go, you can see the pulses are really close together now, so let's see how it goes. All right, well now the motor is connected to the Arduino. So, uh, this uh, white wire is actually the encoder pulse, which is uh, coming out from the, the, sh the rear of the motor from, from there. So that's the encoder pulse. It's going first to the oscilloscope, and you can see the pulses there. And there's another line which is taken from that same point. So the encoder output and that's going into Arduino. I hope you can see this. It's Arduino pin 2, which is an interrupt pin on the Arduino Uno. So every time this pin goes high, the Arduino will count one uh, one iteration, one, one, one click, I guess you could say. So the code is very straightforward. That's the code right there. Um, I'll just quickly try and go through the code although it's uh, this is this is straightforward stuff so we initiate the interrupt pin pin number two right and then we make some kind of counter so if you're using an interrupt a counter and an interrupt you got to give the volatile keyword so uh, just a counter of the shaft and then something to keep track of when we printed last because we don't want to use the delay code anywhere in here if you use the delay, delay blocks the, it's a blocking code, so you should uh, not, we shouldn't be using delay anywhere in here. Anyway, so the setup uh, is basically to attach the interrupt to the pin, okay, so uh, we attach the interrupt to the pin and we define that we want the interrupt to activate whenever that pulse is rising, so that's what's happening here. Okay, start a serial connection, and so every time... Uh, we're going to print about twice a second our output so every time we want uh, every time 500 milliseconds is counted by a counter this last print counter we'll print the output of the shaft counter and what happens is so every time this interrupt is activated by a high by a rising high then this routine is called so this is the routine to be called pulse count and that function is here it's a very simple function that just basically increments the shaft counter okay so every time there's a high pulse, the shaft counter goes up by one. Every time we cross 500 milliseconds since the last print to the screen, we'll uh, print the shaft counter to the screen here. 
and just multiply it by two because actually we're we're doing this twice a second. So if you want to see the frequency, you got to do it uh, twice a second. Multiply this also by two, and uh, then we reset the shaft counter. All right, and then we reset the the timer, which is counting when we last printed. So basically, this loop will print twice every second, whatever that shaft counter value is. And every time the pulse goes high, the shaft counter will be incremented by one. And after we finish printing, we'll set it back to zero so that it can start counting again from the beginning. So let's just take a look at the output. So we'll open the serial monitor. And uh, there we are. So that's showing a frequency of about 166, 64, 166 hertz. Let's look at the oscilloscope. That's about uh, 163, 167 hertz. So more or less we're counting properly on the Arduino. 167 pulses per second on the oscilloscope. And the same value is coming out from the Arduino also, you can see that. All right, let's just turn up the voltage and see what happens. So uh, let's just up the voltage slowly. So we were at 2.7. Let's go up to about 3.3 .3 volts. And you can see there the frequency has gone up to the Arduino is counting about 212, 214 pulses per second. And the oscilloscope is uh, also at about the same value, 213. So the oscilloscope and the Arduino seem to be counting more or less the same. So I think we can conclude that this little algorithm is all right. And uh, we are now able to count the pulses on the microcontroller. So literally now we can, if we can keep track of this, this number, and just figure out a way of manipulating this num, you know, this keep it, keep track of this number. We can then figure out um, how far the shaft is turned. And like I said earlier, if we know how far this shaft is turned we know how far this is turned. And if we know how far this is turned, we can estimate, you know, the exact angle at which it's pointing in the sky. So that's one more step of the project completed. I think at this point, I'll have to take the motor now and connect it to the mount. And then we'll rewire both the motors. So we'll have this one as well as the other one. And uh, luckily for us, the Arduino has two input, uh, two interrupts. So pin number two and three, we'll be using for our interrupts. And uh, with each one of those pins, we'll be able to count the positions of this shaft as well as the other shaft. So it's time for some uh, construction work now. I got to figure out how to fit this motor onto the mount. All right. So I hope that's clear. This is how we use an interrupt service routine to count. Uh, pulses from an encoder and like I said earlier this encoder actually has two pulse two input two output pins so this one as well uh, because I'll be controlling the motor direction by just changing the voltages around I don't need this uh, encoder line however if this encoder were to be fitted onto a onto a shaft that was attached to something else you know a mechanical movement here like a uh, I don't know some kind of lever or something that somebody turned manually back and forth and you wanted to see how far that lever was turned then you would need the second uh, second encoder output but in this project i don't need it so i'm just leaving this blank and the other input the other the second interrupt pin of the arduino we can just use for the second motor so i hope that's clear uh, let's change the voltage again and see what happens so i'm going up slowly going up to 3.6 volts now and as I do so you can see this frequency is increasing I'm at uh, about 4.9 volts so about 370 Hertz is what the Arduino is counting and the oscilloscope is also at about 370 Hertz Hertz 367 over here. So I think we can call this a uh, reasonable success.
okay so the task is obviously now to fix this motor into this bracket here so initially what I did is this motor has uh, these these holes drilled in and there uh, so you know you can screw it into place so initially I tried to drill the holes into this as you can see this becoming a bit of a disaster situation here um, and so I abandoned this approach and I decided uh, to let software do the work for me the problem with drilling this is because it's in this funny structure you can't really get the drill bit in evenly you know at a, at a proper angle so there's a lot of problem it's just looking too disastrous for me to proceed so uh, let's bring in some software and solve the problem with a little bit of clever programming okay so this is open SCAD and what I've done is I downloaded the motor specifications the dimensions of the motor of the internet and I designed this mount so you can see that that's the motor mount and uh, this cut you can see here this cut is actually done on purpose because uh, it's the way the the mount the this mounting surface. Um, see this this hole is actually too close to the edge to allow for a perfect uh, full circle uh, full cylinder for support. So I just had to slice it over there. Anyway, so this is open as scared, and here's the code. Uh, really easy to design 3D stuff with this. Uh, there are the holes uh, for the bottom of the mounting okay and here they are under print so I'll take about an hour or so to print them and uh, then we'll see how we've done This is the end result, the 3D printed uh, motor mount. So you got the screws, you got the holes for the screws that attach the motor, the holes for the shaft, and these four holes in the corners are the ones that attach to the telescope mount itself. So it should just be a push fit. This is the motor, orange uh, 10 RPM. So it should just push into place. That's it. So that's a perfect fit. It's sitting nice and snug, but I will be putting some screws in. And then this fits onto the telescope uh, mount. And you can see that here. Yeah. I've already fitted one of these. So that's the motor now screwed into the mount. And uh, yeah, seems to be fitting okay. Let's look at the other side. You can see the motor shaft coming out here. So that's also now perfectly centered. And uh, this is the gear that now has to fit onto this shaft so that it can then turn this gear. So again, we have to fit this gear onto the shaft to be able to turn this gear with the motor. But look carefully and you'll see that this, this gear is not going to fit onto the shaft. The shaft is too big. I think this is an 8mm shaft or some, maybe this is, I'm not sure exactly. But this shaft is too big for this, this gear. So what I'm going to have to do is now take off the motor and then 
machine the shaft down until it reaches this diameter and it's able to fit into this. So once we have that, then more or less we can uh, fix uh, this gear and be able to turn this the, the, the declination and similarly for the right ascension on this side. So let's get to work with machining this now.